Hey guys, welcome to another Catalina video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the most optimal setup and how to play Catalina to her potential, basically. Uh, before I begin, I want to talk about uh, the last video I made, a uh, very clickbaity video. It was designed to be clickbait. Um, however, it did show off uh, what I think is pretty important for Catalina mains out there. And the fact that uh, Enchanted Lands has such a high damage cap, it's almost unattainable. It is attainable, but almost unattainable. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's uh, talk about the basics of Catalina. Catalina is a support, a tank, and a damage dealer hybrid. Uh, she's generally, if you have a group that knows what they're doing, Never the top DPS, but still has quite a bit of damage she can bring to the table. Now, let's go through her skills. Um, in her skills, she has Azure Sword, which summons Ares. Um, basically, this lets you do full or uh, two full Ares combos um, by you know just mashing Y or X and then mash Y when he does the uh, Ares X slash, which I'll show later in the video, that is the end of one combo. You can do the entire Ares combo twice, basically. Then we have Sacred Winds, which has Glaciate, and AOE Glaciate at that, which makes this extremely, extremely strong. I've actually hit, uh, there's a couple fights that has multiple bosses. I think there's one in particular that has three maybe there's a couple that has three but i've actually hit all three bosses in this glaciate and it's huge it gives the party a chance to breathe it's very significant uh there are a couple bosses that have immune phases to them uh, do not use those on the immune phases but every boss is susceptible to glaciate enchanted lance is our highest highest damage dealing skill by far. Like I said, there's really a damage cap that is very, very hard to attain. Um, and then Frozen Blade is the last skill that I generally use. Um, it's a range attack, kind of like Regan Leaf, except you can chain um, Ares combos to keep them looped. And you can also uh, build Ares rather quickly with it. Uh, its damage output is very minimal, uh, which makes it decent to use outside of uh, having Ares up. Um, just for that regard, that its its uh, damage isn't great either way. And it does give quite a bit of an Ares gauge uh, build to it if Azure Sword is on cooldown. Uh, it also has two phases. So you can be cast twice before entering cooldown, and when you use it once, your cooldown will start regenerating for that first cooldown. You don't have to use two for it to officially go on cooldown before it recovers. You can use it once, and then you know it'll start recovering, you know, pretty quickly. And then we have Winter's Rain. It has a high amount of stun. Apparently, I have not seen this high amount of stun. Um, its damage is very minimal as well. It looks cool. I like the ice spear. I'm a big spear guy. But um, yeah, it, very low damage, uh, kind of a long animation. And as far as a stun, maybe it's because I don't build a lot of stun. Maybe I think it's uh, stun skills have a multiplicative factor with your, spill, with your stun, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's how that works. Not too impressed with it. I usually don't run it at all. Heal, very, very straightforward, very good. Uh, heals very <laughs> large amounts of health. Uh, I, I've got, you know, 30k health before off of a heal. And with Ares, oh, and I should say each one of these skills are enhanced with Ares. Even Azure Sword, you can use this just to loop Ares. But, uh, yeah, heal just uh, with Ares. It just extends the range of it. Um, with Ares, I I've hit people almost 
entirely across the map. Not quite, but pretty pretty far. Light wall, very, very, very strong. I really wish I could have another skill because this is so good. Grants invincibility Catalina, and when you have Ares, it gives invincibility to the entire party. This is such a freaking power play OP ability. Unlike Vayne, with uh, his invincibility dome, uh, you don't have to be inside of it, and they don't have to come inside of it to walk outside of it or anything like that. You just prop it, and they have it. It does have kind of a slow um, uh, startup, so it actually you don't get the invincibility until, you know, as you can see on the screen, when she gets it and she starts glowing yellow, it does take a minute. Um, but very, very strong. I, I've used this against Pyatt uh, and several bosses, um, depending on what our party needs. I usually drop uh, uh, not Sacred Fence, uh, Frozen Blade. But I like to have Frozen Blade. It's very nice, nice to have. And then Emerald Shield. A lot of people really, really like this. It gives a defense boost of 15%, not huge. And Stout Heart, which is huge, to Catalina. And then it gives both of these buffs to the entire party. Um, just globally, like uh, Light Wall gives invincibility to your entire party, wherever you are. Stout Heart is really good. However, because there's a sigil that gives stout heart outright and you don't need to have a skill for it I don't run us uh, I don't feel a need for it I just it seems like a mediocre skill I know a lot of people make entire builds around this just run the stout heart sigil and if your party isn't running stout heart I expect them to dodge or block like a normal person you know uh, Anyways, that's, I guess, uh, I should go over with the Ares effect. Sacred Winds, uh, the AoE is just a little bigger, and Enchanted Lands does a significant more amount of damage. As far as Frozen Blade, not really a big difference in uh, damage or whatnot with Ares. <clears throat> so, when the... Aries Gauge, which is this little blue sword with the the little U circle type thing in it, is full. You can actually use any kind of skill, and Aries will pop out. What I usually do is Enchanted Lands. It is such high damage, crazy, and uh, you can use things afterwards to um, continue the Aries Gauge. So. Uh, Let's go over combos with and without skills for the Ares Gauge. Um, if you, I think the most standard and simple one, it, well, there's really two standard and simple ones, the short one and the long one. Uh, and then there's some combos in between. Uh, basically, it's XY or XXY or XXXY, XXXX. You get the point. Um, yeah, X, Y, Y is the thing that gives the Aries gauge. There's also Y, 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 which does a little circle. And there you go. And do you see that sword that is in the middle? No matter what you do, you're not getting past it with one exception. So anyways, let's... Now it's glowing. Now you're good to do anything. And that is the combo to get past it. So you can, like I said, do any skill to get past it and you will summon Ares. All right. <sighs> All right, so there is part of our Ares gauge. Now we can continue to do this. The only time we can get past this sword is this one specific combo. And here it is. It's X, 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 flurry of things, X one more time, and then Y. And that's it. That's the only way we're going to get past that sword. And then you still need to press X, Y 
for it to glow to summon berries. There's a lot of videos out there that show off all these combos that you know save maybe one to two seconds. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> it really does not matter. Uh, I know for Proto Bahamut, uh, he will. Um, it's not quite here. It's kind of more over here, but I can't get over there. He will put his claw down here to, um, you know, breathe stuff at you. You can actually, before his claw lands, go ahead and pre-stack this. So that way when his claw lands, you hit that Y attack and you actually have Aries Gauge and you don't waste any time. You actually, uh, you, you know, have pre-stacked part of the Aries Gauge. What I like to do is if I have a Azure Sword on cooldown, I'll use Frozen Blade. So f you just target. Frozen Blade, and then Y. Now, like I said, the sword is is a cock block. So <laughs> you can do it again, and you will only get that sword to glow. So instead, let me do it again. Instead, what you can do is you can do Azure Sword, Y, X, Y, now the sword's glowing. Azure sword or uh, frozen blade, rather, not Azure sword. Frozen blade Y, and then X Y, and now your gauge is full. Like I said, uh, you don't lose a whole lot of damage on frozen blade. It's not a very hard hitting skill. It is more for utility. It's got a very fast cooldown. Um, you can use it twice. Really, 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 really good to build the Ares Gauge when Azure Sword is on cooldown. So when you have the Ares Gauge, what are you really doing? So you press X and then you just mash Y. If you press X again, you'll lose Ares. So like I could do Y, 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 X, and see I've lost them, okay? Oh, and Link Attack gives you uh, the same amount as a uh, um, frozen blade into a Y. And it also has the same, uh, the sword cock blocks the gauge. So, <sighs> losing my train of thought. All right. Um, yeah, okay. With the Aries gauge, when you're full, you just want to keep mashing Y. And eventually you'll do an X. And notice how it's gone. Aries is gone. Your combo is gone. There is a way to continue this without the use of a Zero Sword. If you have a Zero Sword, you're good for two combos, as I can show you real quick. We're going to ignore the link attack because that is actually false. Link attack extends it on its own. And I have three here because I gained it through the air, the usage of Ares, but usually you only have two. Now when you're using Ares, um, if you dodge, you'll actually lose them. The only reason I didn't lose them is because, well, let me show you how to do this normally. The reason I didn't lose him is because I had the Azure Sword buff. But if you block or dodge, you automatically lose him, which is really, 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 really annoying. And that's why a lot of people like that Stout Heart buff, because when you are being attacked, you don't get interrupted and you don't get flown away and you get to keep Ares. So for this setup, I actually am running... Um, glass cannon but on my other build I actually switch out glass cannon for um, stout heart infinite Ares loop okay so okay so with skills it's very easy and I'll show you that here in a minute but without skills you are going to summon Ares he'll do two dash attacks 
couple uh, slash attacks and then he'll do an uppercut with his sword and you're gonna jump up in the air when you jump in the air you're gonna stop mashing Y when you land you're gonna do X Y and you'll continue mashing Y and you can repeat this as many times as you want dash dash couple slashes up X Y dash dash couple slashes up X Y dash dash couple slashes up and end with an X slash by pressing Y. Now with skills it's a lot easier and you can actually do it with a link attack as well. It, when you see a link attack just treat it as a frozen blade but a, a big uh, a link attacks do about a little less than a million I think damage so just think of it as like a super frozen blade it, it works in the same um, aspect for Ares as a um, frozen blade anyways when you have your complete Ares gauge you can initial with X or Y or a skill and like I said you can use a frozen blade Gosh dang it. Sometimes after a link attack it'll do that. I'm not sure what causes it. But sometimes it'll cause you to lose Ares when you start out with it. I'm not 100% sure. Like I said, you can start with uh, Enchant Lands or you can start with just an XY. And you just keep mashing Y. There you go. Didn't lose at that time and you just continue to mash it. As soon as your X slash is over, use a skill and then just keep mashing Y. That's Enchant Lands. Frozen, or Link Attack. You wanna to try to get that X slash off if you can. Frozen Blade. You can even do a Zero Sword where you summon Ares. To continue it, it's not the best because it doesn't have a whole lot of damage, but you can. Pretty easy loop. And you'll just continue to do that. And then when, say, you run out of cooldowns, what you can do is go back to just doing this. And then usually by the time you're done with that, something's off cooldown. Um, uh, Frozen Blade has a really, really short cooldown, especially with quick cooldown um, and uh, Cascade and Catalina's um, Ares buff. You, re you really want that for Catalina. Catalina benefits a lot from cooldown. But uh, yeah, just treat Link Attacks as a super buff Frozen Blade, and it's kind of the same thing. So anyways, let's move on. Uh, Enchanted Lands has a huge damage cap. It's attainable with a high investment, uh, and it's unattainable with a meta build uh, due to the supplemental damage and the sigils it takes. Um, it's not worth it in the meta setup. Uh, due to it not being spammable. Uh, it's still very good before you get supplementary damage signals, and it's especially very, very strong in link time when your cooldowns are significantly reduced. So in this video, in this session, I was actually running these. I don't usually run Life on the Line. Well, I don't usually run these three sigils right here. Life on the Line with Cascade, uh, critical damage with uplift and tyranny with attack. I usually run supplemental damage here. However, before you get supplemental damage, these are really decent. The reason is everything else that I have on here. And uh, skilled assault is probably the most important sigil for enchanted lands because it increases the damage. It would usually be at 16 with the sigil booster. To 72 and at 15 70 so very very significant compared to a tyranny which would usually be at 35 or 36 percent 
when you hit 100% crit rate, you'll actually, uh, critical hit damage will actually have the same bonus as Tyranny, being 35, 36, and 35, 36. Stamina is also uh, really, really, really strong. A little stronger than Tyranny if you can stay at full health. Uh, life on the line, very good. Same as um, Critical Hit Damage and Tyranny. Combo Booster is the same as Skilled Assault. However, uh, what it happens with Combo Booster, the way it works, is every 5 hits uh, increases your damage by 10% up unto the max of whatever it says. And I think after 2 seconds, uh, the buff goes away. So it's really good if you can get into like Link Time or if you can convince your party to, you know, Skybound Arts spam, um, you know, hold the boss in place. Um, I'm not 100% sure if Glaciate gets rid of the combo booster. Uh, I would assume it would, uh, but Glaciate is still very strong, and um, the damage you're giving your party by Glaciating is really, really good. But anyways, Gla combo booster is very very strong um, and it is the only thing that really helps max out that um, um, enchanted lands so as you can see here in this practice realm I have uh, skill cooldown on instant and if I spam enchanted lands with Ares I can get 120 million damage in 60 seconds and I can show you that just one more time and it might be a little more or a little bit less. And you'll actually, when you're doing this, you'll actually ignore uh, the link attacks. However, in a real fight, the link attacks are very strong. The only thing you won't cancel for a link attack would be enchanted lands. And I might have to move that <laughs> to a different bar. Just because sometimes when I go to use enchanted lands, I'll do a link attack instead, and I don't want to cancel Enchanted Lands, so I might move that to uh, switch Azure Sword and Enchanted Lands over. But, anyways. As you can see, we're finally hitting the damage cap at this. Once Combo Booster has got all of its stuff in effect. Not quite 120,000 this time, however, very close, and uh, yeah. So let's show you without Ares, just the abysmal damage uh, Enchanted Lance does. Not even half a million. Let's, let's just do one cast of Enchanted Lance with Ares. Two point two million. That is absolutely nutty, ain't it? Um uh, yeah. So now let's do uh frozen blade. Let's see the damage on that without Ares versus with. So frozen blade. Sixty eight thousand. Oof. Now let's do it with Ares. 388,000. Alright. So, yeah, it's a damage loss doing it with, not without, or not doing it in Ares. However, the convenience of being able to build Ares and getting into your Ares enchanted land um, combo is. Uh, more valuable in my opinion so uh, let's look at what a uh, what a, a meta setup would be for a um, with uh, enchant lands spam okay we, we saw it was like 
we saw it was like 120 million ish, a little less, maybe 115 to 120 million um, damage with, you know, full balls of wall damage sigils instead of the supplementary. You'll actually lose damage with supplementary on uh, the enchanted lands spam. Not a crazy amount because supplemental damage will actually do 20% flat of all your damage. But you'll still lose because you're not hitting that cap. So. As you can see, we're 30 seconds in and 40,000. You can hit about 95,000 um, with uh, the um, supplemental damage sigils instead. But like I said, you will lose out um, quite a bit of damage, which is, it, it's just so weird to me that Enchanted Lands has such a high damage cap uh, that no other hero that I know of. Granted, I haven't played half of them. I, I've really only played, you know, just a handful of the Captain, Catalina, Rackham, Yugen, and Vayne, and I guess uh, Zeta, really. But no other one that I've noticed is as crazy in this regard as Catalina. Even Vayne's big... Um, I can't even think of what his uh, skill is called. The, the big hitting, it technically it goes off the SBA gauge. It only hits for about 2 million for the damage cap. But Catalina's, <laughs> her basic, you know, it's got half the cooldown as that. And it, uh, it hits, you know, 2, 3, you know, 3.5 million damage. It's, it's kind of crazy in that regard. So before I end the video I want to talk about a couple more things and this isn't necessarily specific to Catalina this is any character that has uh, CC abilities not slow because slow is ass um, but glaciate or paralysis uh, those are really strong and anytime the boss goes to do something before they can enter overdrive or before they can recover from a break state, you should be using that. Uh, certain bosses have phases where they're immune to glaciate. I'm not sure about paralysis, but um, no boss is immune from the effect altogether. It, just in certain phases are they immune. Kind of think think of it like, a, what, are the, what is it called, bloodlust or whatever, when uh, they're immune to SBA gauge? Like you can't use your, your uh, Skybound Arts against them? It's kind of like that, but no boss is immune to, you know, being Skybound Arts against, you know, just like uh, no boss is immune to Glaciate. Very, very strong, and the fact that Catalina's is, you know, AoE, you can hit multiple bosses, you know, it, depending on what it is, or multiple things, depending on what it is, is huge, and it can give your party a big, big breather, and can give them, you know, you can freeze it in just enough time for a uh, to get a stun gauge. So, for instance, Proto Bahamut after uh, not Scott, not Skyfall, but the other one um, where he's big old AOE puddles, circle puddles things, and then a Skyfall, and then he'll come back right before he does Regan leave. Um, he'll throw his hand down, and it'll send a dark wave. You can actually freeze that, and freezing that hand. You know, if your party's good enough, you can actually get a stun off of that. And again, depending on how good your party is, you can skip 
that whole phase. So pretty, pretty important to know. Now, again, again, this is every character now. As far as your Skybound Arts goes, um, the way I've played it, uh, I don't really know that anybody uses their Skybound Arts for damage. Usually, it's to keep the boss stuck in a spot where they can't do, they can't go into their overdrive, or they can't go recover from break, or they can't move, and you can just, you know, they're sandbag. You know, you, they, they're stuck in place, they can't do anything. So the way a lot of people play is they chain burst it. And chain burst increases your sky mount arts damage and I think that gives you more points and yada yada yada. However, if if one person sky bound the arts and you let the chain window run out and then you immediately sky bound arts again, uh, the person who just sky bound arts is now getting, you know, that ten percent Skybound Arts Gauge or whatever, I think it's about 10%. Um, whereas if they Chain Burst, they wouldn't have any Skybound Arts Gauge. And that's very, very, very strong, especially for... Uh, I know Fairy has really high Skybound Arts Gauge buildup. I know the Captain has very high Skybound Arts Gauge buildup, plus Conduction, which can give their party chunks of their Skybound Arts Gauge. Um, I've seen people loop Skybound Arts Gauge if they know what they're doing, but uh, it really depends on if the party doesn't chain burst. Because if you waste all your Skybound Arts Gauge, you're not gaining that. You're just gaining a little more damage, and it's just not worth it, in my opinion. Plus, by not chaining it, you can keep the boss there just a little longer, and it it, it can be very very helpful. Uh, to your party, it can, <clears throat> for instance, with Proto Bahamut right now, that's all we got. It can be the difference of them doing another mechanic or you just, you know, getting two more shots and at Proto Bahamut and killing it. So, anyways, I figured that's how I would in the video. Just uh, make sure when you play Catalina, Enchanted Lands off cooldown. You'll be all right. All right thanks.